with Big County Preps BC 360 sitting here with Lato athlete Francisco Saicedo. Right. So, <laughs> what do you guys expect at Lato this upcoming year? Um, we expect a lot out of all the seniors because basically last year we was our junior, so now it's like the majority of everybody is just ready to ready to go for the last season. So now, what do you guys feel when you hear people saying, "Oh, Lato's Lato's going to go 0 and 10 again"? I feel it like a, like an energy booster, like something to make us motivated. You know, in a, in the weight room when we work out, you know, a lot of people don't be motivated. All you gotta say is, "Hey, all them teams telling you we're not gonna make it. Come on, let's make it." So they got a lot of kids. So is that how you guys are motivating the younger guys? Oh yeah, that, definitely. That's the number one way we're doing it right now. Now, how is it now with all the new coaches that are there? It's amazing, honestly. Um, I've been through. Two offensive systems, two defensive systems with Coach Elazo and Coach Dennis leaving. And now I got Coach Ketchy. You know, at the beginning I had trust issues, but other than that, you know, he came to us like like no one has ever came to Lato. So now you, you talked about trust issues. Because of so many coaching changes within such a short period of time, you know, I mean, you've been at Lato for three years now, correct? Yes, ma'am. So you've already gone through two other coaching changes. So how did, how does that coach earn your trust? Well, as soon as he came up to us, he you know he introduced himself. He was like, "My name is Coach Kitchy." I was like, "Nice to meet you." Uh, they called me down to meet him, and the first thing he said is, "I'm going." He's like, "I'm going to be honest. I don't know what you know what to expect from you. I, I haven't seen you, but I just believe in me." And then I looked at him, and I looked at him kind of weird. He was just like, "Believe in me. Just believe in what I say." Because a lot of coaches said that, and then once we got to the field that first time. Like he did something, a kid got out of, you know, he got an attitude and kicked him out. He didn't care who he was, and he was like. So there was discipline. You yeah. got discipline. A lot of discipline. Is that important to you guys? Yeah, cause you know, it's a lot. Cause everybody wants to do their own thing. So coaches came up with a discipline system, and ever since that, it's been working. So do you think that might be one of the issues Lato had previously? Was there wasn't enough discipline, and that's why you guys were the way you guys were? Yeah, that's. That's probably one of the main reasons because, like, we'd be on the field and something goes wrong, and everybody's like, "Oh, I don't care. I'm doing my own thing," and nobody's. You guys weren't playing as a team. So now let's talk a little bit about other stuff besides football. If you couldn't play football again, what would you do? I will. If I couldn't play football again, all I think of it is that I'll go to the field and you know be a mentor for the other kids. So now what is it that you want to major in when you get to college? Probably history or, or sports medicine. Okay, and why history or why sports medicine? Well, history, because like, that's my favorite subject. You know, that's one of the subjects that comes easily to me. Anything you say, I'll learn it real quick and I'll ace the test or anything. So possibly teaching history? Maybe so. What about sports medicine? Sports medicine? Just just the field of staying in sports, you know, helping, seeing what I got to do, or if an injury happens, how to heal and stuff like that. Now, how does your family play a role? My family? Well, my dad, you know, he says, whatever you do, I'll support you. It took me a long time to, you know, convince my dad to let me play football. And they didn't start believing until they started seeing the college letters coming, like, they was interested in me. So now, they're on the same boat as I am. So now, who's your hero? Who's your inspiration? I would have to say there's three people. There's my mom, the Pasleys, which is, she's a teacher, and her husband that always, they've been like my sports parent. They're always there at all my games and always help me, and Mr. Briggs, he's okay. one of my teachers. Now explain why for each of them. Why, why is your mom, and why is the Pasleys, and why? Because my mom, you know, I'm the last, I'm the last, or you know, I'm her last son that, you know, to graduate. I'm the last one of the family, I'm the baby. And to see me that, you know, I'm excelling, like, I, you know, I'm advancing in this sport so much that, you know, she's like, wow, my kids, my son is really doing it. The Pasleys, you know, I got, you know, I got to some trouble in school, but they always mentored me everything. You know, they take me out to eat, talk to me, you know, they treat me well, they treat me like if I was one of their own. And Mr. Briggs, uh, I, I couldn't ask for nobody a better support than him. So you talk about how the Pagleys, basically they're kind of like 
foster parents to you inside of school, correct? That's right. So do you think it's important for football players to have someone like that in their life besides their own parents? Yeah, a lot because, you know, sometimes you and your parents might not agree on something and then, you know, you're just left alone. Well, if I didn't agree with my parents, I talk to them and be like, look, you're probably doing this wrong. You know, you need to fix this, talk to them. So they're right there, a supportive parent, you could say. So now, anybody you want to give a shout-out to? Shout-out to all the Leto players. Um, shout-out to BCP. And I won the challenge, just saying. Um, and just to Hillsborough County, who are great football. And my coach, catching. Yeah, and his two little sons. They're, little, they're my little brothers. So now, last question. If there is one athlete in the county you could go up against tomorrow, who would it be? Well, that's a good question. Um, I would like to say hmm, it's either it's either Will Watson from Jefferson or Antonio Crawford from Flint. Why? Because you know Antonio, you know, set a lot set a high scale this year for receivers, you know, when he broke out in the Jeopardy game versus Manatee. And we both wore the same number when we played against each other in the spring game, so you know, it's like a little competition there. And we'll watch him because, you know, he's he's up. He's stepping up really big at defensive back. And, you know, as I'm playing receiver, I got I to gotta face him in the season. All right. Well, it was nice talking to you. It was nice talking to you.